Good morning once again. The Lord be with you. Thank you so much. This morning, our gospel lesson comes to us from the gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13. And we will read and hear together verses 1 through 8, Mark 13. 1 through 8. And if you'd like to follow along, you can find this on New Testament, page 47 in your pew Bible. Again, it's Mark chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. And here is what it says. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he. And they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes In various places, there will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I had a sermon prepared. And things changed. Um, this scripture isn't easy for me to read today, and it may not be easy for some of us to hear, but it's there in front of us, asking us to listen asking us to consider. It's difficult for me to, to read its words. It's, it's, it's difficult for me to sit with them because, as you know, the world has been a scary place over the last few days. Most of us, I, I'm sure, have, have heard many times over by now of the tragedy that struck Paris. Nearly 130 people dead, more than 300 injured, with the Islamic State. ISIS claiming responsibility for the killings, for the carnage. But there are a number of other stories that have gone unheard, unnoticed, untold. A suicide bombing in Beirut that killed more than 40. A terrorist attack at a funeral in Baghdad, at a funeral that left 20 dead. Massive earthquake that rocked Japan. The city of Montreal dumping some two billion gallons of raw sewage 
in the St. Lawrence River. And in Germany, the bodies of several dead children found in an abandoned apartment building. You haven't heard most of those stories, but these are all within the last three or four days. We hear stories like that and it appears, it sounds like, it seems like our world is spiraling out of control like the collective mind of humanity has been lost. And so, when we read the scriptures that we read this morning, they can be hard for us to process. They can be difficult for us to understand. But I think if we pay attention, they are instructive for us. I think if we pay attention, they speak to us something that our hearts need to hear. Because in as much as the headlines over the past several days have been filled with stories of tragedy, of hurt, of despair, of destruction, of malice, of violence, of sin. Those headlines could have just as easily come about any other week or any other month any other year. The stories that we have heard, in other words, are nothing new. Frighteningly, they're nothing out of the ordinary. They're stories that we hear more and more often, aren't they? They are the sad reality of the world in which we live. But they were equally the reality of Jesus' day. They were equally the reality of Jesus' time. Jesus speaks with his, with his followers, with those first disciples. And he cautions them against being given to fear. Cautions them against being controlled by, dominated by fear. He asks whether they see the, the great stones of the temple and of the other buildings. And he says, not one stone will be left standing. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Complete annihilation, complete destruction. That day is coming, and that is not the end of it. There will be wars. And rumors of wars. Hunger. And poverty and lack. Pestilence, earthquakes, floods, storms, death. He says, don't be alarmed when you hear about these things. Don't be alarmed when you see these things. Quite literally, don't be afraid. And I don't know, somehow it seems peculiar to me <laughs> that Jesus would, would offer 
such an instruction. Because it's difficult, isn't it? If we're honest with ourselves, it's, it's difficult to hear the sorts of stories that we have been hearing to see the destruction, to see the terror, to see the death, and not lose heart. Not be frightened. Not be paralyzed by our fear. It's hard. But I think we find something key at the end of the gospel lesson. When Jesus says, these things are coming. These things will happen. It's not a matter of if. It's a matter of when. Jesus closes by saying this. These are only the birth pangs. These are only the birth pangs. The destruction, the violence, the calamity, the death, the pain, the suffering. The things that Jesus says will come. These things are not the end. Rather, they are a sign that God is about to do something new. These are only the birth pangs. We have several mothers here. I don't know from personal experience, but I understand that the process of labor is pretty intense, pretty painful. My mother was in labor with me for what did she say, 18, 19 hours? I was as stubborn then as I am today. The process is a painful one, but at the end of the process, new life comes forth. Jesus says all of these signs that cause you to despair, that cause you to feel anxious, that cause you to feel frightened, that cause you to feel despondent, that paralyze you with fear. Jesus says these are simply the birth pangs. Jesus says do not lose hope. Do not waver in your faith. Because in the midst of that calamity, God is present and God can do something new. God can bring forth life even in the midst of what seems like the end, even in the midst of what appears to be death. Light can shine and it does. Because as we read closely the stories that we have been seeing in the media over the last several days, we can find that in the midst of the wreckage, in the midst of the carnage, there have been beacons of light. One of the most powerful and poignant images for me came after the attack in Paris as persons were being evacuated from the stadium that was attacked. And as they were being evacuated, they joined their voices together to sing Le Marseillais, the French national anthem. Showing unity of spirit, unity of heart. 
That they were willing to surround and embrace one another in the midst of that tragedy. That is light in the middle of darkness. The book of Hebrews has this to say. Let us not grow weary of coming together, but let us encourage one another, especially as we see the day coming, that last day coming. I suppose what I'm trying to so ineloquently say about all of this is that there are essentially two things that sustain us. Not if, but when these times of calamity come. Not if, but when the terror Strikes Not if, but when we are gripped by fear. The first is our faith in a God who is bigger than any evil that this world or the human heart is capable of contriving. The first is our faith in that God. Our hope, our trust placed squarely in that God, the one whom the book of Hebrews said is faithful. We can trust in the faithful promises of that God. The faithful promises of the one who said that we will never be left, nor Will we be forsaken? Not if, but when those times come, our first course of action is to turn toward that one who is faithful. But as I said just a moment ago, it is just as important for us to remember in those times, not if, but when they come, To turn to one another. To embrace one another. To show love and compassion to one another. That means praying for those on the other side of the world. Who we don't know. But that basic Human compassion compels us to lift to God with our care. It means praying even for the perpetrators of such senseless and heinous violence. It means praying for their heart. It means praying for their soul. This isn't something that the pastor has decided to make up or pull out of thin air. Jesus says, pray for your enemies. As Jesus hung dying on the cross, he begged forgiveness for those who were killing him. If these times come, no when. When we are surrounded by the things that attack us, the things that threaten us, the things that, that beat us and the things that break us down. When these things come, however and whenever they come, may our response not be given to fear. May our response not be given to panic. May our response not be given to persecution. 
May our response not be given to assumptions. May our response not be given to overgeneralizations. May our response not be given to division. May our response be a heart that is given to God. Trusting in the promises once again of the one who is faithful. And may our response be to give ourselves to one another. Lifting one another up. With signs of mercy. And of peace. And of compassion. Friends, it is not our duty, it is not our responsibility, it is not our call to be afraid. We were not given a spirit of fear. We were given a spirit to love. And love, when it is perfected, dispels fear. May our hearts, therefore, be guided by love, by the God whose nature and name are love, that this love, not fear, but that this love might be seen in us and through us for the transformation of this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.